Hey, Shalom, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Bahashem, Rachach, Hodash. So, double honors to our apostles who are elders who rule well. Blessed salutations to your brothers out there teaching and during truth sincerity. This is uh, going to be a response video in, um, in, in the comments of the Young Brothers page uh, um, in lesson uh, going over slavery. And the question was by Nick Bracing. Uh, it says, I don't really hear an answer as to why the Bible said it was okay to own actual chattel slaves. Now, this wording, whoever this is, is trying to put, trying to use wording to be in a, tr a trick bag. Because for one, the brother, the brother was not addressing if it was okay or not okay. All right. Um, and he was just explaining the difference between um, Babylon slavery and American slavery, okay? Um, at the end of the day, when you have a kingdom, you have slaves. But one thing I want you to pay attention to, uh, as he said, as to why the Bible said it was okay to own actual chattel slaves. So once you go to the word chattel, in in the uh, in the term itself, Abaratazad is the, yeah. There we go. So when you go into a, a term of chattel, it's in uh, legends, legends of America dot com, and you go to word chattel. Chattel just pre pretty much means to own solely, to solely own something. Um, at the end of the day, we are slaves to Yahweh by Shem Shai. All right, we're uh, of his possession. When a woman becomes married, she becomes a slave to her husband. When you sign a mortgage, you become a slave to that mortgage. More, well, most people, because you're signing a contract. If you sign a lease, you have a birth certificate. Your birth certificate is in all caps. You are a slave, okay? Um, and it's funny how people like to challenge the uh, moral compass of biblical save slavery and you're just living in um, pure wickedness right now and you're not contesting the nature of the social security system or even the condition of the uh, America right now but that's neither conversation that's neither here nor there to compare and contrast what one thing we do know is that Slavery just pretty much means ownership. When you talk about chattel slavery, you're talking about pure ownership. Okay, um, chattel slavery came about because, or the idea in Babylon, the 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 transition of chattel slavery happened because the Gadites and the uh, Edomites that came over here, they were indentured. The Edomites, well, they created the indentured idea. And the taskmaster idea, because when they came over here, they had them intent with the intent to be slaves, and the Edomites end up running away and going by the uh, Gadites and the Reubenites and, and getting away via through them. So they pretty much came up with an idea of um, creating chattel slavery, which pretty much, uh, and once you go into the uh, the actual term of chattel slavery, um, I'll go back to the. Um, the definition here says chattel using the term for an enslaved African-American, a human being is equated to, with livestock or furniture or other tangible, portable, personal property. Chattel could be left in a will or sold or transferred without permission of the enslaved person. So that's where the goyim comes about. That's where that comes about, where you get a mixture of Esau's. <clears throat> Esau's uh, perspective and rule and then you got the actual way that slavery is supposed to be handed out because the whole intent of slavery is if you're too poor to take care of yourself and or uh, you are a servant unto that kingdom okay so let's see here let's get there because one thing about Esau's slavery is that he stole people, okay? People that were just fine. Now, if you lose in war, that's another thing too because you lost your country. You're going to become a servant 
to the to the victor. That's just how it works. That's why when Alexander roamed around and he took over Israel, he took over Eastern Asia. What happened? He had them plan, paying tributaries. They were slaves. Okay, so slavery happened throughout throughout the scriptures. Now the difference between Babylonian slavery and uh, um, biblical slavery is the fact that they were not treating people like humans. As again, as you see, the, their definition of chattel means livestock or furniture. They came up with the uh, idea of um, Darwinism and, and, and counted uh, people three, mainly Israelites, three fourths of a human. You know, pretty much justifying why they should treat Jake like livestock and, and, and like nothing. Okay, and then on top of that, they pretty much uh, uh, that gives them an ability to, to to murder, to to pretty much do what you. Once you treat somebody less, consider them less of a human, you could treat them like less of a human. And uh, they came up with Darwinism based off that. But the slavery within the scriptures isn't based off of saying, OK, you're less of a human, so I can beat you half to death. Or really, I could beat you to death, because if you beat somebody half to death in the, in the scriptures and they survive, you got to let them you got to let them survive. Now, if you beat them and you knock off a foot or you maim them. You got to let them go. You know what I'm saying? Um, but let's get in the scriptures and, and, and cover what that goes over. Because Esau's slavery was, was demonic and it was personal. Okay? Because we had moved the most high to wrath. But the slavery, according to the scriptures, are more sensible. Okay? Because everything that, the, that has order within a society was given by the most high. Okay? So in Levit Leviticus chapter 25 verse 38 it says i am the lord your power which brought you forth out of the land of egypt to give you the land of canaan and to be your god and to be your uh, your god or your power and if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxing poor and be sold unto thee thou shalt not compel him to be uh to serve as a bond servant <clears throat> but as an hired servant and as a sojourner he shall be with thee and shall serve thee unto the year of Jubilee, which is the seventh year. So this is called what they call indentured sla um, slavery. And indentured servants normally go according to Israelites. Israelites are only the ones that can be indentured. Pretty much, you are, you are, uh, you can be sold to your, uh, you can be released after the seventh year. You earn your freedom. Okay. It says, and then shall be he depart from from thee, both he and his children with him. And shall return unto his own family and unto the possession of his fathers shall he return. For they are my servants, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen because we are servants of Yahweh. While Yahweh shy, we are not to be sold as bondmen or bondwomen either way. All right. Because we are under somebody. Yes, we all are slaves to somebody. Just like it's order, we're slaves to, to the Most High. The, the 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 heathens of this world are slaves to us. Okay, just like a woman is a slave to the man and a child is a slave to the parents. Okay, because you don't, a child can't just get up and go where they want. You feed them, you, you do, they got to clean up. Everybody's a slave to something. Okay, everybody's uh, 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 owned by something. And ultimately... All men on planet Earth is ultimately owned by the Most High, but men are owned by other men too. Just as I said, if you stay in this society, you can't just go up and leave this country as you see fit, right? Because you can't just go out on, in, in a boat and then go around and then leave America or come into America because you, you're... You have to give up your, your your slave note, your citizenship. Okay. It says, uh, uh, and then he shall depart from thee both. It's like you. Um, verse 43, it says, and thou shalt rule over him with rigor. But thou shalt fear thy power, both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have. 
shall be for uh, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. That's right. If you're not an Israelite of them, shall ye buy bondmen and bond maids? That means what? Now you're talking about chattel slavery or not in a concept of considering somebody as cattle, because even heathen are considered as cattle because you can't just, you know, knock a heathen's eye out. As the scriptures say, you knock the eye out. If you smite them and they lose a member, you got to let them go. But Esau slavery wasn't like that. You can't sit there and rape uh, um, a man's woman because that's adultery. OK, Esau's slavery was not protected by the scriptures. OK, sure. The scriptures say children obey your masters, but that was talking about men of the Lord. Right. But they use that to have people follow them. OK, so it says uh, both thy bond men and thy bond maids maids. Which thou shalt have shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bond men and bond maids. Moreover, the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them ye shall buy, and of their families that are with you, they shall begat in your land. Uh, they, a uh, like it, which they begat in your land, and they shall be your possession. You see, because you get a, when you begin it for wife, you get it for pos a possession. And you shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. OK, but over your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule one over another with rigor. And if a sojourner or a stranger wax rich by thee and thy and thy brother that dwell by him wax poor and sell himself unto the stranger or sojourner by thee or to the stock of the uh, of the stranger's family after that he is sold he may be redeemed one uh, deemed again one of his brethren may redeem him either his uncle or his uncle's son may re uh, may redeem him or any that is nigh of kin uh, um, unto him of his family may redeem him or if he be able uh, he may redeem himself and he shall um, and he shall reckon with him that bought him from the year that he was sold uh, sold to them until the year of Jubilee. And the price of his sale shall be according to the number of years, according to the time of an of an hired servant. Shall it be with him? OK, uh, if there is like if there be yet many years behind, according unto them, he shall give an. Again, the price of his redemption out of the money that he was bought for. And if there remain but few years unto him, the year uh, unto the year of Jubilee, then he shall count it with him. And according to his years, shall he give him again the price of his redemption. And as early and as a yearly hire servant, shall he be with him and the, um, and the other shall not rule with rigor over him in thy sight. And if he be not redeemed in these years, then he shall go out in the year of Jubilee, both he and his children with him. For unto me, the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord thy power. Now, that's just pretty much talking about the difference of Israel and heathen, heathen uh, slavery. And it's crazy because Esau is very cunning with their words, try to make slavery bad. But meanwhile, you and your four, as the scriptures say, the children, the children shall complain of an, of an ungodly father. Here it is. You try to act like the Bible's bad because it's slavery <clears throat> that was written in it. All right. You want to talk all this about the scriptures, but look at what Babylon has done. And they haven't stopped from from enslaving people via through prison systems, illegal prisonments, uh, uh, and, and taskmasters that they set over us and doing these things, it's, it hasn't changed. They just find a way to do it to where people can't openly complain. Trumping up charges, putting Jake in jail for years, and an Edomite could do the same thing, get like three years, one can get life. You know, and that you're, now you're back into that hardcore slavery and nobody can say nothing because it's, oh, he's a criminal. But you entice them to be one. You know what I'm saying? Now, outside of that, just pure slavery, you got your birth certificate, your social security card, and then ultimately they're trying to go back into uh, uh, ultimate slavery 
which is through the mark of the beast. And they're trying to um, enslave you and your soul and your spirit, man. They're trying to own everything about you. All right. Because they only own you by documents now, but they want to put some in your body to where they can say they totally own you, which is that that mark of the beast, 666, Kai Sai Stigma. OK, so going into slavery again, the, the the biblical slavery is the whole point to it is about being poor and not being able to to uh, uh, um, provide for yourself at a substantial rate. OK. And as the scriptures say, when the when the wicked rule, people mourn. When the when the righteous rule, people rejoice. So you got these. When heathens go into slavery under Israelite rule, they're going to rejoice. They're going to enjoy themselves because it's not going to be like Babylonian slavery. Somebody just pop up and and, and and beat you because they want you to work so hard to uh, 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 for cotton or sugar or, or something to to become rich. We're naturally going to be rich as Israelites. So when we talk about slavery, it's all it's all according to pretty much ownership and who's the ruler. The rich are the ones that own the slaves and the poor. You know, I can't even say the poor, but the people who aren't the rulers are going to be the slaves are going to be the servant. But at the end of the day, the slave just means who possesses you, who owns you to be a chattel slave means pretty much who owns you forever. And the new speak of it is pretty much considering you as cattle. That's Esau's speak to where it gives them a, 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 it gives them an ability to treat you like an animal, man. That means beat you. Murder you on sight, chop off a leg, chop off an arm, you know, castrate you. So that's where that term chattel slavery came from because they couldn't keep them Gadites and they couldn't keep Jake either. So they came up with this idea that Jake was three four, three parts of a human. You can read about it in, in, in uh, Black Indians where they lowered their uh, appreciation as a human being, giving them the ability to own them forever. Because you couldn't legally own a Gadite forever. All right? Paperwork right wise. All right? And there's a lot. When you talk about Esau's paperwork, that's why a lot of these Edomites say, oh, I got some Cherokee in me. Because you're doing that for land grabs. But that's a different subject for a different time. I just thought I'd throw them under the bus with that one too. You know? But at the end of the day, this slavery, is it, um, let's see, is it justified? Uh, it's, it's the natural order of things. Let's say it like that. If you're poor and you can't provide for yourself, then, and you need somebody to provide for you, just like you need to get on government assistance, what happened? They tell you where to stay, where to go, you know, and they provide you with your resources. Nobody complains about that. But then when we tell Esau and the heathen that they're going to go back, in, they're going to go back into slavery and, uh, the heathen are going to be slaves forever. But it ain't going to be like Esau slavery, slave shacks, eating, eat, eating pig slop. You're going to be living good. You're just going to be giving us tribute like the Romans did Israel and, and all the other nations. But way better with a way better condition because we're not going to need armies and, 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 and things like that. It says the scripture said we shall beat our swords into plowshares. OK, so. Let's get this other scripture and then we're going to wrap it up. Deuteronomy chapter 15 uh, and 12, it says, And if thy brother and Hebrew man or an Hebrew woman be sold unto thee and serve thee six years, and then in the seventh year thou shalt let him go free from thee, and if thou sendest him out free from thee, thou shalt not let him go away empty. Thou shalt furnish him liberally out of thy flock and out of thy flower." Uh, out of thy floor and out of thy wine press of that of that wherewith the Lord thy power hath blessed thee, thou shalt give unto him, and thou shalt remember that thou was a bondman in Egypt in the land of Egypt and uh of the and the Lord thy power redeemed thee for uh therefore I command thee this thing today, and it shall be if he say unto thee, I will not go away from thee because he loveth thee in thine house. Because he is um, he is well with thee, which shows you that slaves aren't just beat to shit. All right. Under the uh, Israelite rule of slavery. OK, then if, if, a, if a slave, especially an Israelite slave, be pleased to dwell with, 
You know, and they ain't talking about no no Stockholm syndrome where you're making a person feel like that's the only way out. All right, is the is the, the biblical slavery or Israelite slavery is nowhere near the same as Esau slavery. You're pretty much this. It's like if I own a business and you're an employee, but when you're an employee, you're getting paid not like you're working. Uh, 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 in Taiwan making sneakers is not like that. You're working a regular job. You're a manager at a, 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 a company getting paid well. You know, and people normally say, hey, I like this job. So then what happens to an Israelite, Israelite specifically? Then shall thou, thou take an awl and thrust it through his ear unto the door and he shall be thy servant forever and also unto thy mate um, unto thy maid servant thou shalt do likewise. So pretty much, if an Israelite is pleased to dwell with an Israelite as a servant after seven years, then you will put an um, earring in his ear, and that's why Jake wear earrings in one ear because that signified that you were were content with being a slave. Okay. Now what about the heathen? We don't got to put an R in your ear. You're a slave forever. You know what I'm saying? And that is what chattel slavery goes back to. And guess what? There's nothing wrong with that. All right. If, if the company that you're enslaved to is treating you, treating you good, you don't have a worry in the world. Just like the, the jobs that you work at, you're an employee. You're a slave to your job. You're a slave. Only thing is that you can break that contract. All right. That's the only thing you're, you're not, a, you're not, you're an indentured slave. All right. And that's why he tried to use the word chattel slavery. Yeah. Guess what? The heathen are going to be chattel slaves to Israelites in the kingdom of heaven. Okay. They're going to be slaves forever. But the catch is they're not going to, we, we rule better than Esau and they're not going to be, you know, getting treated to the utmost disrespect because of the evil that dwells within us. Like Esau was doing Chop, chopping off Jake foot, raping the men, raping little boys, raping the um other men's uh, uh uh wives. You know what I'm saying? Raping the um the girls. Now we're gonna be able to take if we if we uh, as slave owners and you're Israelite and, uh, uh uh walking and surveying your land and you see a a a, 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 a heathen and you see shorty and she look good. You hey you like I want her. You know what I'm saying? And most people think of the worst case scenario, screaming and dragging, snot flying, you know, kicking and, 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 and yelling and pulling by the hair and you walking off with her. No, man, them people going, you hear about an Israelite wanting to have your daughter. And you're going to gladly say, here, hey, hey, take her, man. Because you're going to know that's going to set your kid up for life. You know what I'm saying? So. That's the same way if, if, if Prince Harry come over here and tell any any of you, you women, hey, man, what's up? Which one of y'all want to roll with me? Y'all going to take it, man, because that's your out. Ain't like Prince Harry come here and grab you by your grab you by your lace front and then drag you into his his his, his prestigious car and nobody see you again. And everybody's crying. That's how Esau slavery was, man. And nobody wanted to be a part or deal with him. You know, so at the end of the day, when we rule, Moab's going to be in their land. Ammon's going to be in their land. All the heathen are going to be in their land round about. We're going to have servants and, and handmaids and, and manservants servings in us. And they will love to be there. They will, people will fight tooth and nail to be there. And when they when they are wherever they are under our tooth, under our governing, governing body. All right. They're going to be under the laws. OK, because at the end of the day, they're all going to be servants to the laws and have to keep the law, statute, commandments under the new covenant that we're going to be under. The whole world is going to have to follow the laws and we're going to govern that. And therefore, you're going to be servants unto us. OK, that's how it's going to work. And it ain't going to be like I said, once once we if you tripping, then we tripping. And all you got to do is keep the law, statute, commandments of the land. Ain't going to be no more atheism and. And Buddhism and whatever you want to be into, you're gonna be an Israelite. And that's that's point blank period. Okay. So um 
at the end of the day, ain't nobody trying to answer why is slavery okay. We're just telling you how slavery is going to be done and how slavery was done according to the Bible and how the comparison of Babylonian slavery and American slavery, I mean, Babylonian slavery and biblical slavery are totally different. Okay, now the terms are the same. What it means is the same, but you can't associate intentions with results because Esau had intentions on, on, on wiping us out, throwing Jake over the boat for nothing. You can't do that. You're not supposed to do that. Right? Have somebody working when the sun goes down. All kind of things. Have them eating pig slop because we still got to keep the laws of the land, man. We still got to keep the laws of the other scriptures. We can't. Esau broke all kind of scriptures uh, uh, within that slavery, man. He didn't honor no no code. He didn't honor no paperwork, no nothing, man. So that's that's going to be the difference. And guess what? Let's matter of fact, let's read that. Let's go into the book of Revelations, the eighteenth chapter. Uh, Revelations 18, um, ver uh, 18, verse 6, it says, Reward her as she rewarded you. With what? Slavery. Those that lead into captivity shall go into captivity. And double unto her according to her works. And the cup which she had filled, filled to her double. How much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall not shall see no sorrow. So that's why, oh, why slavery is so wrong and this and that. And any of our people that follow that is it, it, foolish. Because at the end of the day, Esau got to get what he deserves, man, for what he done for slavery. Because the type of slavery he did was inhumane. It wasn't right. He was breaking laws all over the place, man. That's what the problem was. And then on top of that, after seven years, you're supposed to let an Israelite go. Because as the scriptures say, no man shall buy us. There's nobody to, 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 to give us, you know, a, a relief. But they knew we was Israelites. The whole world know, know who we are. All right. And they try to eliminate us and call us anything under the sun. But an Israelite, because, you know, you got to let us go. Just like with, with Pharaoh and Moses, you got to let us go, man. We're God's chosen people. And this is the last go around. We're going to go through any type of slavery. And the people that's trying to resist and act like slavery is this evil thing. And then that we should let it go. They know it's a transition. They know that the the, the uh, first shall be last and the last shall be first. They know why uh, uh, Jacob grabbed Esau's heel. All right. And so they're trying to come with a, a, a rhetoric or a doctrine to try to discredit the Bible because you can't you can't address slavery and say it's okay without acknowledging that what you did was wrong and that you got to get punished for it. So you got to just try to disannul slavery, period, so nobody can touch it. Nah, man. We're going to touch it in the kingdom. We're going to get all kind of slavery going, man. And Esau is going to be getting the worst of it. Okay? He's going to be getting all the all the legal uh, legal wrath that we can provide, man. All right? Beatings. Gonna beat the brakes off him. Because that's what he deserves, man. He reserves double, man. Hanging and lynching and all that. You know? Lynching, just lynching. You had no reason. Jake ain't, ain't attack nothing. He wasn't going crazy. It's just lynching Jake, man. Because you found that you want to pretty much create genocide, man. You know, still, still a man. What the scriptures say, he that still a man, usually stole a whole nation of people, man. You know, let me see. Let's, let's get that.
just like it. So Exodus 21 and 16, it says, He that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. So you won't comp <laughs> you won't complain about slavery. First off, the you've been found with the with the Israelites still in your possession, Esau. So let's let's you know nip that in the bud and try to stop trying to make a make Jake feel bad for bringing up the subject of slavery, or try to discourage Jake. Try to oh yeah with the Bible with you you ever answer my question? You got the nerve to have try to demand something out of somebody after what your nation has done, man. You know, just 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 follow these two things. Fall back and be easy. Enjoy yourself. And if you're a Jake, do the same thing. I don't know who that is in the comment, whether it's Jake or Esau. If you're Edomite, fall back and be easy. Your time gonna come and, and hey, he if you're easy, if you're a Jake and, and you wanna try to demand, look, you're gonna be thrust through with him, man. Because there there will be a order within a kingdom, there will be a kingdom and there will be servants because you can't have a kingdom without servants. Okay, very simple. I don't give a damn how you feel about it. You know, it just ain't gonna be no IRS and people barely being able to make rent and electricity and provide for their families because your 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 Federal Reserve fiat notes ain't gonna be all that, man. All right, people gonna eat. People gonna like it's, the scriptures say again. When a when a righteous rule, people rejoice. When a wicked rule, people mourn. The world is gonna rejoice when the Israelites put them in captivity. Okay, because slavery is nothing but what ownership. Chattel slavery is just pure ownership. You know, uninterrupted. It's pretty much you you somebody slave forever, and the whole world is gonna be Israel's slave. Hey, so shalom.